What's good, people? Welcome back to another match review on the Hotspur News Channel. And on New Year's Day, we lost 2 0 at home to Aston Villa. 10 games in a row, we've conceded the first goal. And also, I think this is the first time we've conceded two plus goals, seven games in a trot since November 1988. So, says it all, really. But um, today, I'm with Josh, as always, and we're going to go through the goals, um, do a few player ratings here and there, and um, try and. And also try and figure out who our best player was, if there was one. Um, so, yeah, um, I thought, let's just get into the first half very briefly. Um, I think the first half was just another prime example of us not having a clue against teams that sit back. I mean, Villa sat very deep in the first half. They had a couple counter-attacks here and there. Ollie Watkins had a shot who, and he dragged it wide. But, I mean, that whole half was just... Asked Pepper in the ball around Villa's box, and then just passing backwards to Longley, and that and that was literally what happened in the first forty-five minutes. And um, and uh, and although that happened, could have scored a couple goals. I mean, Son's final pass really let Kane down, and um, Kane had a header cleared off the line by Ashley Young. Um, so yeah, first half I thought we weren't too bad, but um, once again, just shows me a crowd midfielder, isn't it? This has been an issue for the last year. I mean, last year, well, to be honest, since Ericsson left. Yeah, I think low rocks have always been the toughest thing. I mean, I just don't understand it, man. Like, the thing is, yeah, I don't want to go on about Conte that much, but the thing is, I know we can't build a team or three to do seasons, but if we had... We, we've needed, since Vertonghen's left, let's be honest, we've needed three good centre-backs in that squad. Yeah. And for some reason, we've only bought two who are good enough to play for the first team. And one of them, in Lengle, is OK. He's a backup option. He's just all right. He's serious about going and challenging for league titles or at least getting top four. He's an OK yeah. option. Like, the only good centre-back we've bought is Romero. In, in four years, four years where we've needed a... Three centre backs, <laughs> and I know we maybe. And like the thing is that annoys me the most is that we're so. The thing is, last season maybe would have been if we had maybe not had the resurgence of Dyer or Davis, we maybe would have gone out and bought those centre backs more. Yeah, but that's the thing that annoys me. Like I, I just, I know last summer it was hard to get the Stony in our top targets and Gravano yeah. and Stony, but. You could have put Kim Min Jay. Look how good he has been at Napoli. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it annoys me because now we're at a point where we're struggling so much defensively. Like you said, the 10 goals, um, the 10 games we've conceded first. Like, that's poor. We're starting on a back foot in the best league in the world in <laughs> 10 games in a row. And yeah. We've won how many games? Three. So, cool. what, what are those 10 games? So we've won against Bournemouth. No, if you actually in all competitions, we've gone more, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. So it might be like 13, 14. Maybe, so yeah. Who knows? Right away. So the Champions League games we've played since then. I think we played Frankfurt in between that. So we conceded we, first in that game. We conceded first. Like in the Champions League, we conceded first against Marseille away, Frankfurt at home, and both games against Lisbon. Yeah, oh, except, from, except from two out of what five games we can see the first, no six. We yeah, one goal is draw, and the other one was a two nil win. I can't say, we were going to score before that, so yeah, I just hey, but why do you think we concede first 10 games in a row? Like, do you think, like, to us, like. I know it is also down to our bad defending and our lack of squad depth, but do you think it's also down to the players just not believing in Conte's style of play? No, I, d I, I disagree with that. I think, look, I think, I know you've talked about it before with the Brentford game, mean, not necessarily backing Conte as much anymore. I don't know if you still stick to that. But I think the players still trust in Conte. I just don't think they have the ability maybe to play his system. Hmm. This, like, also as well, what you have to realise is that I think teams have started to fi find us out more um, from what it was last season because before Wait, the reason why we found so well last year teams found us out from the Chelsea game the 2-2 two -two. 
Yeah, I think Tuchel's system might have worked and then people kind of replicate mm. that. But I feel like as well, on the counter-attack, the reason why we did so well last year is that we can go, bam, we can just counter-attack to We can mm. basically, we go, we go from defence to attack really, really quickly in transition. And that's why Kulisewski worked. That's why Son was in such good form. Because Son's not good at beating his man, right? 1v1. He just doesn't do it for some reason. Yeah. When Son runs in behind, he's the best in the league at running yeah. behind. But I feel maybe now teams have found out how to play against that. That's why maybe we're struggling the most because we're not able to score goals. So what's going on is, is that teams sit back and score the first goal on us because we're not creating them enough. Yeah. Which is maybe the reason why. But also I think against Villa, we probably would have scored in that first half Kulosevsky would have played. Because we were yeah. we were dominating and we were doing all right. Just up until we just didn't have that clinicalness in the final third. We didn't have that execution. Well, we had that, and also our build-up play was so slow. It was like so, it was just sideways, backwards. I really. Know, I wanted to ask, what do you make of Gil? He's not mate for this league, mate. Unfortunately, I think. I think. Look at look. He's twenty-one. There's time. I think he's showing a willingness to get on the ball, to drive, to go. I just think he maybe needs to bulk up. And I think maybe go on a loan spell. I think at first, I think for this year, take him to Spain. Take him to a league where he's technically going to get confidence, where he's going to improve his final third. Basically, where he's going to play. Yeah, but the thing is... Yeah, but, but the thing is... Where he yeah, but the, he's already... He's already proved it in Spain. He's proved it in Sevilla. He's proved it in Valencia. He doesn't need to go spare. Like, if he's going to go on loan, send him to one of like, the lower clubs, if you know what I mean. But my thing is, he's not playing at a high level, so his ability isn't going to get necessarily better. He's just going to look more good. So maybe go in, Maybe, like, France, because France has got a physical league. Yeah, maybe I don't know, mate. Into France. Maybe Italy. Italy could be quite a good idea. Italy is a lot more than France. It's quite, quite physical. The quality of Italy is better than France. Yeah. But, um, but anyways, the main thing I'm going to talk about right now is what worried me about yesterday's game is the story of our season. When we go behind, we always find a way to come back. But in this game, Villa scored the first goal and I look around and no one's willing to get back into the game. Like, not even Hoiberg. Even Hoiberg looked like us yesterday. Hoiberg was one of the worst players on the pitch um, in that game. But I think... I don't know what it was. I think that maybe it's all to do with a tactical thing. Because if you actually look at the teams we've come back against... Brentford mm. are good, don't get me wrong, but Brentford could see goals for fun. We went 2 0 to Bournemouth as well. Yeah, 2 0 Bournemouth. <laughs> to be fair, at that point they were doing quite well. I think if they had actually won that game, they would have been fit. But yeah, but come. I think they'll get relegated, like, and we're going to the rounds of Bournemouth, like, come on. But to be fair, I think come, coming back in that game was still quite a good achievement. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's still good, but the two players but one... before that with Davis and Cecil, but you know, um, oh yeah, the quality of Bournemouth. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, like the top quality teams, I would say we didn't look like a threat against Newcastle, even though we did come back. But I think after they scored, we fumbled in that Newcastle game. Mm. Liverpool was the only game, but we that game could have still been. They could have won that game 4-1 or we could have won 2-1. That's how it was. It was one of those mm. tougher games. It was really end-to-end. -end. Um, and then you've got what else? You have Arsenal. It um, was also another one. We were doing well in that game before the second goal, I would say. Mm. And then we just capitulated after that. It's another thing. I guess it's away from home. So it's there has been occasions where we've done stuff like this against teams, but they've all been of a higher quality. Mm. Which is quite interesting because I find that when we go up against teams who are better than us or of a similar level now, this is not a necessarily good thing as well because we didn't do this last season. Mm. When we go up against teams that maybe just slightly worse or a little bit worse or better than us or similar level, we seem to fumble. 
or seem to yeah. do well. You look at Newcastle, they're of a similar level to us, I would say. Look at United, that was a really bad performance. Arsenal, um, West Ham, you would say squad-wise, they're near us. Um, not like, if you look at their squad here, but if you look at that squad, they're not horrible, are they? They're just, I think their gelling is a bit off. Um, I would say Liverpool, better than us, I'd say, squad wise. <clears throat> yeah. Chelsea, similar level. Actually, mm, they're similar level. So yeah. I would say, you look at that, all those teams, all those teams deserve to win that game. It was yeah. like a point of, that's my issue with us. Like, I don't expect as well, especially with the features we've got after this, we've got Palace away. It's going to be a tough game. But they're worse than us, but it's away from home. Palace do perform quite a decent time. Then we've got Arsenal, Man City, Man City again, and then Fulham. So, like, <laughs> it, it's not... It, it's, we could generally be in a position at the end of January, with recruitment or not, where, similar to last season, we're 7th, 6th, and Conte's talking about leaving. Which yep. is, so have we I know we got top four last year, no we improved, but we've not actually dealt with any of the issues. We the main issues and the reason why we lost games last we, year we've not dealt with it. We got top four last season because Arsenal bottled it. It's simple. It was in their hands. They were four points clear with what, three games, two games to go. Mm. And they bottled it. It's simple. To be fair, it, I think that was misleading because they had they hadn't played us yet and to be fair, they had injuries and their fixtures were a lot harder than ours coming into the end of the season. So I don't know if they bottled it necessarily. Like they hadn't I mean, to play. it's Brighton as well. Yeah, they, they had to play. But look at the teams we had to play. Burnley, we had to play Newcastle, who were actually doing quite well. I mean, that is true. I mean, that is true. But even in Arsenal's easy games... They lost against Southampton one deal when they lost at home to Brighton as well. So uh, like, but Brighton, uh, they finished ninth that year. We, yeah, we yeah, decent, but uh, decent, but Arsenal should be beating Brighton. Come on, like like, yeah. like even last season, Arsenal should be beating yeah, Brighton. Be us as well that year. No, well, yeah, because we were shit that day. But I don't know, but but yeah, regardless, um, <laughs> who was your man in the match Villa game? Because <laughs> I can't think. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, I go me as well. I, I I showed my support. I I screamed at the ref about twenty times. So uh, no, but in all seriousness, I thought maybe mm, I would. I wanna what only you could say you started. I would say Perisic did all right. I think he was quite. He was yeah, my dad said that. He said Perisic weren't too bad, but actually, I thought I thought, I thought Longley weren't too bad either. To be honest, I thought Romero was a bit. I, f- I thought Romero was really reckless, I'll be honest. No, Romero was good as well, to be fair. But he didn't yeah, he was all right, but then again, he was reckless as well. And that, and to us, to us, he was lucky he didn't get sent off, to be honest. Yeah. But I don't know. I think Perisic, I think Saar coming on, but that was only for a couple of minutes. Mm. Emerson? <laughs> no, no, to be honest, like as much as we slate him, as much as I want him to leave, like, he wasn't that bad when he came on. He wasn't bad when he came on, but I don't know. Yeah, and he still needs to go. Um, <laughs> BSR, SAR is important. He did more in five minutes than Basuma done in 80. Uh, um, maybe more than 80. <laughs> Two months? Probably, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, but... Um, I mean, you could also go with... Kane, oh, no. No, 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 come on, don't say... Kane did absolutely nothing later. <laughs> He was, was alright in that first half, I thought. Yeah, but he lost the ball for the second goal, and I don't know. Um, to be honest, like in terms of both teams, man, the match, I go with that Camaro, that that forty-four. Yeah. Bossed up. He bossed our midfield. Last season, like Atletico Madrid wanted him, Barcelona wanted him, and he went to Aston Villa. Played very well. He's done. I think as well, like Douglas Luiz. Yeah. Up. You can see why big clubs want him. Um, I saw Arsenal were close to getting him, weren't they? They were really close. But I 
Arsenal and Villa didn't want to sell him. You can see why. He's really important to their squad. Um, and now, and especially now, Villa are going to ask for more money from him as well. It's going to be you know tough for him. Oddy Watkins is like England's version of Timo Werner or Darwin Nunez. Yeah, he, he does bottle a lot of chances. I think Oddy Watkins is like England's version of Darwin Nunez or Timo Werner. He, mm-hmm. he creates, he does well running in behind. He's a threat to the fences, but he never seems to get on the score sheet. Um, which is, I think for me, I thought he played well yesterday. Um, obviously, he has scored against us before, so it's not like he's a missed goal scorer. But yeah, I I think he played well. I think who else? I think Tyrone Mings was quite good. I mean, Doherty's surprisingly, good. because to because in my opinion, like overall, Mings is just another version of Dyer. Like he's got a mistake in him, you know. But yes, he had a good game. So did that Konza as well. Both of them were pretty sound in the defence. Oh, and actually, to be fair, Ashley Young had a blinding game as well, wasn't it? Like, <laughs> hate to say it because I hate him, but you've got to give credit where it's due. He had a, he had Son in his pocket, as what well, three of us most defenders have had Son in their pocket this season. But even, even Jordan Zemur from Bournemouth. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's, it's not like a um, yeah. The only player to not have him in his pocket was Daniel Marty at Leicester. I don't know. Yeah. Of a player he is. Uh, but anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say, like, I mean, fair play. I mean, this it's not like we lost to a bad Villa team. Like, if you look at their squad, they should be top 10, minimum. Like, Danny Ings, Ollie Watkins. I think, I think Villa will finish just in the bottom half because Fulham and Brighton look very good this season. I think, I think Brentford might drop off with Ivan Tony. Obviously, Ivy's got yeah, to yeah, I think that's a big miss. That's a big miss, you know. And I think they might drop off and then Villa might go into the top 10. And then maybe Brentford just slip down to like 11th or 12th. I mean, we'll find out. But um, but yeah, um, obviously our Palace preview uh, will be going up on our channel as well. Um, 2 0 loss to Villa. Um, yeah, it's looking a bit worrying because it, cause if we play like that against Arsenal and AC Milan and Etc. We are getting absolutely slapped, but yeah, we've got to play Rafael look, Leal and fucking Olivier Giroud in the Champions League. How fun! Rafael Leal against Emerson Royale. I can't wait for that. But but listen, we'll find out what happens. By that time, it will be someone else. So like, hopefully, well, hopefully. But listen, uh, well, listen. Um, both me and Josh are going to keep you guys updated with um transfer rumours, etc. Um, apparently we're linked with that. Also, name that Pedro Poro from Sporting Lisbon. Wouldn't mind him, to be honest. Um, but yeah, listen, we're going to keep you updated as always um, in this January window. Obviously, open on New Year's Day yesterday. So, both of us keep you guys updated on our Instagram. Uh, in terms of Palace Watch Along, we don't know yet. There might be one. Um, but there will be a match day vlog for the Arsenal game on the 15th. So, stay tuned for those videos. And um, thank you guys for watching this. Also be a combined 11 just a discussion with an Arsenal fan on the match preview. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. But uh, If you guys don't remember. <laughs> oh, no, I was creasing. Uh. <laughs> oh, mum! <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so thank you guys for watching this Aston Villa uh, review and we'll see you in the next video.